In last week's program, Curtis Kelly, as a young boy growing up in the New York area, became entangled in a web of voodoo. He was trained by a voodoo priestess and told he would be taken to meet the president of Haiti for additional training. But he realized the voodoo woman was robbing his neighbors by selling them false cures for their illnesses. He was tormented by demons at night who appeared to him in many forms. Finally, one particular demon offered him power, money, and women if he would be willing to give himself completely to these evil forces. He said no, but the battle was far from over. Now, the conclusion of Curtis Kelly's amazing story. Next, on Stories of the Supernatural. Okay, the waste of spirit. The waste of spirit is exactly what it is. It's a spirit that's job is, is to make you waste away a little bit at a time every day. Its job is to, to cause a lot of fear, a lot of fear. The fear of being in a house by yourself, fear of turning the lights off, uh, fear of uh, uh, flying on an airplane, fear that uh, different things are going to happen to you, fear that you're going to that you're going to go broke. It torments you constantly. Like one famous actress said, the reason why she works so hard because she's afraid of going broke and she's tormented with that idea. So if you're tormented in public, you're tormented in private. It, it won't just attack you outside. It starts in your house. They love to hang out in closets and under beds. And their, 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 their main target a lot of times is children. They love to torment children. And I tell parents all the time, if your child say they see something in the room, don't beat them down, just go in there and see. You know, guilt is, let, let the waster spirit, this actual spirit, let them know that this child is not alone anymore. Now the child got some help. Go in there, if you're born again, spirit filled Christian, take your bottle of blessed oil and anoint the threshold of that room. Just like Moses did the deaf angel. It's not the deaf angel, but it still torments. The deaf angel, you know, that came just to just to do away with you. But this thing does to slowly pick at you until you are nothing but just a bag of, of torment. If the wind blows too hard, you'll say, well, what is that, what is that? That's the job of the waster spirit. It does what it says. It comes to waste it away. It's, it, it's in the bed, it's, 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 on, it's in the closet, and, it, and it's also known around the world as the boogeyman. That's his name, which comes from the Caribbean islands, the bogey. They used to call it the, the bogeyman. And children who were bad, they used, to, they used to be threatened by the parents to say, if you don't be good, you know. They would say, mom, if you don't be good, mom, I'm just going to taste the boogeyman after you, mom. You know, that's in the Caribbean. And, and the children would be afraid, but by the time they got to, to America, they went from boggy to boogie. You know, and it's still, it is a spirit. And, and children are tormented by it. And then people uh, uh, call the waste of spirit in the church. Many church people have the waste of spirit to where they can't sleep at night. They're tormented. It takes your sleep away from you. It'll actually take your sleep. You wake up in the middle of the night over and over again because you're under attack of the waster spirit. Say over in Europe, in, in some parts of uh, Europe, they call it Tantu. It means, to, it means household ruler. And when a person, when a person dies, and, and this is where this thing is so creepy, when a person dies, especially the male, the male of the, the man or the, the father, what, this, what the waster spirit would do, it would take on the appearance of that person. And they would walk through the house, and then you would feel uh, uh, your bed go down. You would feel your, the, the room always cracking, pops, and like doors closing when nobody's in the house. That's the waster spirit. And it, and it just looks like the face of an of, of a, a ugly person. Sometimes gray in appearance, sometimes brownish appearance, big ugly cold eyes that never look to the left or right, but a stare straight ahead. Even though he knows you're right here, if you see him, he'll just stare straight ahead. By disregarding you being there, even there, he's there to torment you, but he's not paying you no attention because of him, you're not nothing. He's just coming to destroy you. You're in his house. He's gonna look right at you. I've seen him face to face. I've talked to these, 
I shall talk to the spirit from time to time. It's very big hand. One finger is as big as both of my fingers put together on one hand. They're very big. I was even touched by them as a child. They was the, told me I was supposed to do certain things for them. It's an actual spirit. It slides in sometimes like it's got broken feet. You'll see it here sliding in the middle of the night and you can feel it in the closet. You can feel radiation from it. That's why fear is nothing without the presence of it. That, that like radiation that comes off of a spirit, that's the part that torments you. That's the Bible said, fear has torment. That's the part that torments you. If you don't feel it on your natural body, big deal, hasn't done anything to you. You can laugh at it, but what it does, it knows that it radiates a type of radiation that burns, it makes you feel bad, you feel a, a, a horrible feeling, and then it'll have black spots in the ceiling. It'll be like clouds over clouds. That's when you know that that waste of spirit is in your house, and there's millions of people around the world who are tormented every day by a waste of spirit. They can see his actual look, the like face level of a man, because these are fallen spirits, they're fallen angels. You know, and they have an appearance like on a, like some of them have made a male actual appearance. They look like a man with the eyes, nose, and mouth. And the, and but God has not given us that spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And they love secrecy. They love it. They love for you never tell anybody that you're tormented. Don't say anything. Nobody's going to believe you. See, and that person that you want to tell, he may be tormented too. See, so there may be three of you tormented in the same room, but he said, don't tell, don't tell, because he doesn't want to be brought to the light. They hate the light. Any kind of light, they hate it. They hate it. They actually hate it. And that's why they, <laughs> they don't want you to turn on any lights as far as knowledge of people knowing that they exist or the house light. They don't, they, they don't want it.